With the end of Rob Maurer's daily reporting comes a new era. I sort of did not even want to cover this because I get attached to uh, people and then when they leave, I get, I just get a bit sad. I do not know Rob personally, but I watched hundreds of his episodes and uh, yeah, I just don't like when it's time to say goodbye to someone or something. But I'm happy for Rob that he's really busy and he got some really exciting new projects. He will be greatly missed. I will discuss it a bit more at the end of the video. I'm gonna put timestamps down below. And right now, let's get through some of the latest news. Tesla has finally released the adaptive headlights feature for the new Model 3 in the European Union. The car will dim individual pixels in the headlights to reduce glare for other drivers and cyclists. Tesla Cybertruck is making an appearance at the Montreal Auto Show this weekend, marking the first time Tesla has put the Cybertruck on display at a public auto show anywhere in the world. Tesla sales delivery service and techs will be on hand as well. I am not sure if you can go inside though. When I went to check out the Cybertruck when it was first delivered here to the Tesla Center in Vancouver, I could only see it from the outside. Has that changed now? Leave a comment down below if you were actually able to see the inside of the Cybertruck when you went to check it out. Maybe Tesla changed the policy now. And a Tesla Cybertruck is going on a national tour in China, but Tesla is not really planning to sell Cybertrucks in China. So it's just used for marketing. Maybe eventually Tesla will sell Cybertrucks in China, but if that happens, it's not going to be anytime soon. Oof, Ford has now officially confirmed it is scaling back F-150 Lightning production by 50% throughout 2024. That's a lot. I think Cybertruck is contributing to Ford scaling down F-150 Lightning production. No Tesla US price cuts last night. Very good sign, says Gary Bly, because you gotta keep in mind that Tesla, when it cuts prices, it does so on Thursday nights. Lower Model Y lease rates will not impact Tesla's earnings, it impacts the Lester's bank counterparty's earnings and is more a function of lower interest rates and the off invoice treatment of the $7,500 EV credit. I think Dylan has some good points here. A lot of people criticize legacy media for its coverage of Tesla over the years. A lot of people criticize Elon for his political commentary, selling of Tesla stock, false timeline expectations, etc. A lot of people criticize Tesla for not advertising and not doing a better job of educating the public about electric vehicles. A lot of people criticize Wall Street for not giving Tesla enough credit when it comes to AI, autonomy and the revolutionary manufacturing techniques it's implemented. A lot of people criticize EVs for being too expensive, not having enough range, not working in the cold, etc. We saw a few superchargers freeze in Chicago, but then we also saw some gas stations freeze in Calgary, so I don't think it's a problem really that's unique to Tesla. What if I told you that if you have any desire or plans to buy more Tesla stock, you should, in a weird way, be appreciative of how this is all playing out. I actually get happy when Tesla stock is down because I'm buying more Tesla stock and yes, I am buying more Tesla stock. Whether all of this criticism is warranted or not is irrelevant. It's all working together to slow down EV adoption and to suppress Tesla stock. This is not an argument on Tesla's current valuation by any stretch, but take a second to imagine what the scenario could be if all the aforementioned criticism was flipped. If Wall Street gave Tesla credit for everything that's going to happen in the next decade. If the public was fully educated on all of the benefits of EVs and was willing to pay a slight premium upfront for a lower total cost of ownership and everything else that comes with EVs. If the masses weren't being duped into thinking that Elon is the enemy and actually saw him for who he is. Someone that's not perfect like all of us but that sacrificing his own well-being by using his extraordinary gifts to serve humanity at a scale we have never seen. Including some truly banger posts. I'm not gonna show what Elon posted yesterday, but I wish someone told me not to check Elon's timeline in public yesterday. That post was a true banger. If legacy media was constantly singing Tesla's praises about how it's cleaning up our air and setting new standards for safety, manufacturing and smart EVs, leading the world toward a safe, abundant future with AI and robotics. 
relentlessly pursuing autonomy so that eventually hundreds of thousands of lives are saved from ending tragically, securing our grids with battery storage, ensuring far more resiliency, Tesla would almost certainly be valued much higher than it is now and Tesla's financials would most likely be much stronger. More demand, less price cuts, higher margins. My point is this, rather than spending time being frustrated or defeated about how all of this is playing out, appreciate the fact it's going to give us accumulators more time to buy Tesla stock at lower prices for longer. The time is going to come sometime in the next decade when the criticism falls on deaf ears because the results Tesla will have achieved will be undeniable. Just like before, when Tesla initially came out with the Roadster, no one even believed that you can really make a good AV. And then Tesla's Model S came out and you couldn't really make that argument anymore. Some people still did, but it only became absolutely completely undeniable when Tesla released the Model 3. Oh, EVs can actually be, well, maybe not exactly affordable, but many people could buy one if they really wanted one. And now with all of these price cuts, most people, if they want to get an EV, they can actually get one. I am in the camp that while all of this criticism may be slowing things down, it will not ultimately stop Tesla or Elon from succeeding and achieving everything we know they are capable of in the long run. Just buckle up, embrace that it is going to be a multi-year journey and enjoy the ride. Every time you see the criticism, just remind yourself that this is allowing us to accumulate even further. Sometimes a change in perception can make all of the difference. Tesla could not be stopped this past decade and it's not going to be stopped in the next one either. Everything Dylan said here, I totally agree with every single one of these things. And this is a bit of a warning to Tesla stock investors. If you don't have this mentality, holding Tesla stock is extremely difficult. And it's so easy to make a mistake to sell some stock and then later on you see the stock go up and then you feel like you're missing out, you buy back in and then the stock drops again. And I've seen some people repeat that a few times. The first time it happens, I feel sorry. The third time it happens, I just feel some strongly mixed emotions. I still feel somewhat sorry. Although not really because now you just did it to yourself. You knew exactly what you were doing and you still did it. but. The first time I saw that happen, and especially after the second time and the third time, I had this deep, profound understanding and realization, oh, that's why people don't beat the market or actually make a lot less money than the market with their investments. So you replied to Dylan by saying, unfortunately, these mainstream media articles, videos, etc., are extremely effective at convincing a ton of people that Tesla's are not great at all, and that Elon is a terrible person. Of course, both are not true, but a lot of people believe they are. There's still lots of fud to fight, and that's one reason why I do these videos. Based on conversations with people in real life, Dylan says, I can confirm too, fud may be at an all-time high. I think though, 2022 December <laughs> was quite a bit worse. Now, that was next level FUD. Compared to that right now, I think things are going relatively smoothly. The bigger worry back then was, is Elon really staying at Tesla in the long term? He's selling Tesla stock and he's buying Twitter or he already bought Twitter by then. Right now we know he wants to stay at Tesla in the long term because he's asking for a new compensation package. If he didn't want to stay at Tesla, he wouldn't be really doing that. Tesla is at another auto show. This one is in Washington DC and Tesla will have a cyber truck over there as well offering rides. GM has now officially begun production of his $340,000 EV. <laughs> And James says, this is the dumbest idea for an EV I have ever seen. And that comes after GM released the Hummer EV. So it's saying a lot. Ford just released a new ad for its Mach-E and we gotta watch it. If you're looking at the Tesla Model Y, you need to look at the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It takes you where you need to go, where you wanna go. It has a lot of storage. 59.7 cubic feet in the back, 4.7 cubic feet in the front. You can also charge it up at home or take advantage of the blue oval charge them. 
the largest public charging network in North America. The phone can wirelessly connect to the center touchscreen with Android Auto compatibility. You can't do that in the Model 1. And with Ford Blue Cruise hands-free driving, you can let go of the wheel, hold on to what matters. Still considering a Model Y? This is the kind of EV you want. I'm not sure about that charging network. Even on Ford's website, Ford has this a rather detailed guide of what to do if the charger is not working. I think uh, it's a pretty popular resource that people look up quite often. And with Tesla, you don't need Android Auto because you got all of the apps, all of the important ones, including YouTube, for example. Uh, and it works pretty well. Tesla's maps are also pretty good, although I do prefer Google Maps a little bit more. Mostly because if I need to, let's say, make a right turn and there are two roads, so I'm going this way, and there are two roads next to each other, occasionally it's a bit difficult to tell which one do you need to take with Tesla's navigation. I've never had that issue using Google Maps on my phone, even though the screen is much smaller. If any Tesla engineers are watching this, please improve that. The Maps app on Tesla's then would be absolutely epic and much better than Google Maps because you got this huge screen. I think Steven absolutely killed it with his reply. This is like a nice guy beta orbiter trying to convince a woman her amazing boyfriend sucks and that she should dump him since he is a much better choice. I mean, this tells you everything you need to know about the mic. And I test drove it and yeah, it just, it's just, it just feels, it just feels dated. If you drove a Model 3, you get into the Mach-E, or if you drove a Model Y, the Mach-E just feels dated. We might see a new interview or a new speech from Elon Musk next week because he will be attending an anti-Semitism event near Auschwitz. And the event has a primary focus honing in on the disconcerting surge of anti-Semitism in Europe that has been escalating since the 7th of October. Okay, this gives us a pretty good glimpse in terms of what's happening with the Cybertruck story. It says, I was invited to start designing a foundation series Cybertruck. This is interesting because in 2019, I did not reserve my order until the morning after the unveil. The online Cybertruck reservation tracker estimated my overall position in line to be 95,000. I'm getting invited an entire year earlier than I thought I would be. Having said all of that, the foundation series is too expensive for me, so I am unfortunately going to have to pass on this, going to wait for less expensive versions down the line and see what happens. If we round up the numbers and we assume that Tesla has about 2 million Cybertruck reservations, that means that Tesla has worked through about 5% of its backlog in terms of offering the foundation series Cybertrucks to these people. Now, of course, Tesla will have better luck converting some of the earlier reservations into foundation series orders than trying to convert people that just put a reservation for the Cybertruck because the sooner you put down a reservation, the more interested probably you were in Tesla overall and the Cybertruck. So it has taken Tesla about a month and a half to go through this backlog, but also we have to assume that Tesla is increasing Cybertruck production somewhat exponentially. But it could be that regular Cybertruck deliveries are not going to start for quite a while. Oh, a Tesla executive is visiting China currently. He's in Shanghai. I translated the post with Google Translate. There is not much in here, but I think the visit probably has something to do with Tesla's next generation vehicle or the updated Tesla Model Y that will be produced in Shanghai later this year. Tesla released this little cool video showing the Sabotra going through these uh, somewhat challenging roads. There's nothing else in the video. The Sabotra just keeps going like this for a whole minute. Tesla just posted a profound post. It quoted this post, uh, which is uh, a map of Tesla charging stations in 1437 AD. Tesla says a couple centuries make all the difference. Jerry rig everything, drove the Sabotra from a 100% to 2% state of charge while towing 11,000 pounds, mostly on the highway. Ambient air temperature was 32 degrees and there was also some wind. Outside, uh, the Sabotra had 
inch all-terrain tires, you got 90 miles of range with 2% left. If you are towing anything heavy, you will definitely want to get the range extender, otherwise you will not go that far. Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today I've got a number of personal announcements to make. After more than six years and almost 1,500 episodes of Tesla Daily, today's episode will be the last. Even though it's coming to an end, I do still want to be here to talk about all of the amazing things that I'm interested in. I do still want to cover Tesla closely, and my point of view on Tesla is unchanged. I was quite a bit sad to see Rob Maurer make that announcement. Uh, the first question that I had for myself as a Tesla stock investor, did Rob's Tesla stock thesis, did it change? But he said that his point of view has not changed, so that remains the same but he'll just simply not cover daily news anymore and he will just stick to major stories going forward i do feel a little bit more responsibility to do a better job with my videos because until now my thinking was okay well rob is going to be there at the end of the day giving his perspective so if i am a bit too much for someone they can just go watch rob and it's it sort of evens out i think in life you need balance you don't want to be always all excited the whole time. One reason why I do not burn out is because I just get so excited. When I see something great happen, I get excited. That gives me energy. So when I see the news, I get excited and then I cover the news and then I'm even more excited because I want to share that positive energy. Um, Rob didn't really do that. He was neutral little emotion uh, which i see that as a positive in rob's case it's just not exactly i can definitely do that style but i would uh, if i do exactly if i follow that exact style you might see a video from me as well the end <laughs> it might take a while though but i would probably burn out to do something every single day including weekends yeah and I, I need to it's it's a it's quite a hack to keep your energy levels high, get yourself excited. But primarily I rely on numbers and logic. If you guys follow me, you know that I placed in the top 20 when I went to Math Olympics. So getting excited, showing my excitement that actually, I had to learn that. I, I did not quite know how to do that. Naturally, I'm just like how I am right now. Just talking like this usually, not really excited or down just neutral but other than increasing my energy overall the big reason why i get excited is because i see so much negativity and i know people read these stories and then they get really upset and really demotivated and then if you just watch coverage that does not have any emotion then you might still feel even though logically you understand okay yeah this is all makes sense but you, you still don't have that feeling of excitement and that is what I try to do with my videos. I try to overcome all of that negativity, not just with logic, but also leave you feeling a certain way. And before I started making my own videos, I would often watch Rob and then, especially if the news day was uh, very bad, then I would watch Steven right after that and then I would feel really good. But seeing Rob do a great job was inspiring to me and that's one reason why I started covering Tesla as well. I know many are feeling a bit sad including Dave but primarily I just feel thankful that we had someone as great as Rob leading our Tesla community. Stephen Mark Ryan is wishing the ultimate Tesla workhorse. Rob Maurer, success with the new venture. Thanks for the relentless work over the years. Tesla Daily was an amazing resource for Tesla investors. Daily content will be missed by many. I saw a few people on X talking that I'm an alternative to Rob. Uh, my style is quite a bit different, but certainly I, I feel quite honored. Thank you everyone for all of your support and I will see you in the next episode tomorrow.